Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is something related to the command line. So I have been using command line. I, I am sure you all you who are here also been using command line. But I want to go back to the first time when I started using command line. So when I started, I had to learn a lot of commands. Now I'm expert, I know many of the commands and every, if you call, ask me any, at any moment at night, or any moment in the day, you can ask me what you can do for this particular purpose, I'm able to tell the command. But that's not the case with the newcomers. So my talk is about how I can help, or how we can, as a community, work for reducing the um, learning curve uh, learning um, curve of newcomers. So it's all. Of, it's a suggestion. It's more on, is something that uh, I'm currently working on, and so we will see what we, uh, what I'm trying to propose here. So just to explain what I do, I do programming. Uh, I've been programming for a very very long time, and I also teach programming. And I teach programming for the engineering students. And I regularly use command line, like all of you here who have been who have come to listen to this talk. And as you know, when you started, you had uh, got lot lot of problems. Think, go back, go back to like first day of your engineering school, what or whatever studies you had done, and you started using command line. Your teacher said, "This is the goal. This is." We have you learn something which is very simple. Uh, Linux is powerful. This is great. There is a great community, but the reality is you start with some commands like ls list files, and then you go on to touch to create new files, and then you go on to make directory to create a directory. Okay. CD change directory. PS, list processes. I'm, I'm going through all the uh, commands that you have learned. Top, list processes again. Netstat, list the, co uh, list the network connections. List hardware, LSHW. LSCPU, to display the CPU architecture. And then something called date for setting and printing the date. But show this to your students and you start, you don't see any pattern. You see ls, ls to list files, so why, can, why can't I write lsdir to list directories? Why can't I use uh, 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 or make directory or md to make create a directory? Some systems do have it. Why can't I use a change date or uh, 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 something like that? So there is no common pattern, you just see a list of some shortcuts created by the first people who wrote these programs, and we continue using them. And we try that we, the next generation of our students or the next generation of people who use them also do the same. Take a look at PS and TOP. I do not understand how any newcomer could understand uh, that PS is for processes and TOP. Okay, forget about PS. Top is about also about processes. You list the top processes in your system. I think it is very very hard for any newcomer. So the the, the thing is, uh, if you think that okay, that's all about the commands. I can learn some of them. What about the options? If you think hyphen v, hyphen v, you all have been using it, and you is it verbose? Or is it version? You try to you try to do many commands, and you will find that this has been this is not used in a standardized manner. People have been using in a very the developers have been de developing in a very different manner. For some for some it's verbose, for some it's version. And then you think about recursive. Just check today uh, right now if you are the computer. Uh, hyphen R capital and hyphen R small. So one stands for reverse, one stands for uh, recursive. Okay, so there is again, uh, so if you learn hyphen R or hyphen recursive one time, uh, you, you are not very sure. And then another issue, help. So this is something that everybody needs. So either I can do ls minus h or, or some command, for every command I have hyphen h or double hyphen h 
or even hyphen hyphen help or just hyphen help. I'm sure it is very, very hard. So you could say to your teachers, as, your, as my teachers told me, go and refer the manual page or the info page. That's great. Okay, I can do it, but I want to learn it a bit faster. I want to make it much more simpler to sort of, sort of uh, uh, standardizing these things. Next thing, this is very important. You have noticed once, I, I, come back, I want to come back to this particular page. Uh, you see that all these have been talking, what we have presented here is much more English oriented. What about students who are in France? What about students who are in other European countries? What about students in any other Asian countries so, uh, who do not even know these words? So they have to uh, first learn, they have to be first be able to learn that HW means hardware, so LS is list and then list hardware, so LSHW. That is one way of thinking, but I think it's very hard for a non-English speaker to go through this process and learn all the commands. And that is creating, that is something that I want to say here, saying why not we are not thinking about multilingual, multilingual commands and multilingual options. This is very, very important. So. Let us see what is there right now. People, I mean developers, have been working on uh, standardizing these aspects. If you go to, uh, so I am working with C and I've been working with uh, Python as well. But I see C has uh, in some, some manner have standardized this aspect. There is to, to, if you are a programmer, you could use get opt or get opt long. Or if you're in Python, you could use arg parse. So let's see with get opt and get opt long. What I was saying in the beginning, like how can I differentiate between a long format and a short format? So I could say hyphen H is a short format, so it's my hyphen H. And if I want to write the complete form, I could say double, double, hyphen, double, double hyphen help. So I have such certain way of, so this has been standardized by get opt long. So something you could even try and write if you are a programmer. So this particular aspect is very well standardized. So now if you are a programmer and you want to create new commands, think in this manner. How, uh, think to use a get op long, forget about doing parsing in your own style. There are commands for these things. Then, then you, you can also have optional arguments. For example, if you want to remove a file, rm-f, the file name, what would happen is, the hyphen f requires an argument. So that sort of, those things can also be done, easily done with get top, get top long. Now, this is much more better in Python. You have more and more and more options here. So you have got the short and the long options. And you can also have one or more arguments. It is possible, also, this second aspect is possible in C. There is a, command, uh, there is a uh, function called get opt, uh, get sub opt. What you do there is, you could say, uh, I would wa want to pass a value, comma separated value, and the get sub opt will parse it for you. That's possible. But here it's much more interesting because you could say, I want this particular option requires one or more, uh, uh, can, you can specify one or more arguments. And you can very interestingly, you don't have to do th these things, you can also specify the data type in this uh, particular function. Much uh, other aspect is help messages. So you can say, if I want to discuss what is rm minus f is forcefully, you could say rm hyphen f help. It could give you the details of, sorry, rm help hyphen f. So you could ha get the message that help for this particular option is to remove a file forcefully. That's one example. Uh, then you can also group subcommands. What I mean by, what, we, uh, what they mean by subcommands is if you work with git, you have git remove, git commit, git so uh, git checkout, uh, git log. So all those second command, the second option for the git, uh, the second command is called subcommand. So you could cr also create subcommands very easily with Python. So this is what what we have been doing, what like what the uh, developer community have been doing in a way that we are able to standardize the whole whole part, the whole system of dealing with the command line arguments. Very very interestingly. But what I want to talk here is something that could be future, that could, we could also incorporate colors. I don't know if you have worked with fish. Fish is like a 
uh, fish is like the bash, uh, uh, but it's 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 very nicely shows uses the colors. So you the command and then you specify the col uh, options. The colors change. It's very nicely done. So I w I think this is will be will very interesting if we incorporate this idea to the to the library itself, so that when programmers develop it, it could be much easier. Another thing is progress. Most of the time when we copy files, we would like to see what is the progress. There are commands that are currently working to do them, but I think it's more for data science related stuff where you can do it, but not for everything. So that's two things that I would like to talk about the future of this live from the libraries. But now I want to see, I want to talk, to, uh, bring some topics from the existing domains. Take for example, this is nothing new. You have, if you have worked with web services, web services, you have a group of resources and you a access this a particular resource with different actions. So you have CRUD L, the create, read, update, delete, and list. So in, for example, if you work with uh, HTTP, you would say HTTP, this a uh, book, the whole URL, but with the book hyphen one, if the book identifier is one, you'd say uh, read or get, so you get the details. So you have the same URL and yet then you use del uh, delete, you could delete that book. So there is one source and you use the same command, uh, you use the same thing to access different resources. So you don't have to remember a lot of things, you only have to remember the source, which in case of command line is usually files, directories, uh, processes, network statistics, and then you have the sort of your actions, like here, in, in this case we have create, right? so this is five of them. I don't know whether you have, whether you remember this project by Firefox, very interesting one, uh, 2008 or nine, I think, I, I don't really remember the exact year, but this project was interesting because this project talked about making a natural language multilingual natural language interface over the Firefox. For example, if you want to write a mail, if you had installed this extension, you could have said mail abc uh, abc at abc.com uh, and the message, and it will automatically, if mail is linked, you could uh, it could send a message to the person. Or if you say map, given the coordinates, you could send. So you can also do it in other languages. They showed it with Japanese, I think. Uh, other, um, so it was sort of a multilingual command. So that is something which uh, is interesting for, for to get inspiration. So what I'm saying is multilingual actions, what I said, CRUD, CRUDL, or any other action verbs that you would like to think about, and also the resources, the resources that we already saw. Okay, now, example. So think about create resource, so create file, read a file, so you have the same words, so students or anybody newcomers have to learn only five, few action verbs, and like create, read, update, delete, and list, and then you have sort of uh, uh, the resources like files and processes and all. And now I go to the same thing. If you are a French speaker and if you want to work the, the same thing, the action verbs remain the same. We say create, create and resource, afficher and resource, uh, modifier uh, la resource, supprimer ou lister la resource. Um, okay, so that is possible. Uh, so with the multilingual aspect, so you have the same thing. But think, it's not just about the commands. Uh, it's not just about the command. If you are also working with subcommands, something that I talked about with git, you could use git or whatever new command you want to create. You could think in this particular manner, something that could standardize and reduce the learning curve. But I didn't talk about uh, options. So, so command is. Uh, the command or subcommand is uh, multilingual, but you can also think about uh, making the options multilingual. For example, here I want to say something like top, top the list the top ten processes uh, in descending order of some some aspect uh, of or memory usage. For example, so what I did list resource hyphen hyphen count ten hyphen hyphen order descending order. So that's one way to do it. So what I said, what I want to conclude here is multilingual actions, uh, the resources, and, and the options. 
So, why not let the users create the aliases? I remember, I have friends, I mean, I have people who work with, like, who have even uh, G, A, B, C for all the commands that they use. Like CD, they don't write CD, they just write C. And also, the, they have already created aliases. So, what I'm saying is the aliases should be left to the users and not to the ultimate developer. So, developers create simple commands, actions which people can comprehend. And the users, if they want to use, uh, want to make shortcuts or acronyms or mnemonics, they could do it in their manner. And why not le let users decide the colors? If they want to put the command in blue and the options in red, let them do it. So that's, again, giving the power to the users. But, 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 always is but. <laughs> so what I'm saying here is think right now what you are doing uh, to work with some command lines. You use, um, you go to man, you search man, ls, and everything. Now, you, I'm now what I'm talking about here is a multilingual documentation. You have got the resources and you have got different verb actions. So the whole aspect of documentation may change. So whether we want to accept such a proposition is, is debatable. But you should also think that if we change this way of thinking, the documentation and the working of commands will also change. So this is very important. So I would like to conclude my talk saying, OK, the goal is to reduce the learning curve. We want to attract more people to the open source, especially students who have never seen or never worked with the opening of open source communities. We can't talk about using graphical user interface, making them very beautiful. But as Azar Eskan, I will show you the article, he says, the text is much more powerful than a thousand images. You can do a lot with simple textual commands. That's why we like to speak with, uh, we like to talk, we uh, interact with each other. This text is very beautiful, even if we can do with images. Uh, thirdly, which is very important for me, or in general, we people are now very much concerned, is the linguistic diversity. Our languages are dying. And it is very important that we as a community that, that we work to preserve, to protect our languages and also ensure that people can access the resources within their own languages. So whatever we do think link, about the newcomers, about the linguistic diversity and attracting them to the open source. Finally, I just want to give you some references. This is the arg parse of Python. This is still there, the link is still there, uh, Mozilla Labs Ubiquity project, very nice project you could see. And the article of Azar Eskin, where he talks about linguistic command line, how we could really empower the command line, but in a natural language. I'm not go I do not think natural language is something uh, very useful or Maybe, maybe later, like we, how we talk with other, uh, so other tools right now, like Siri or uh, other, other, uh, other companies that have read, uh, have are coming up in the market. This is about the command line, and I, we do not want to change it to a big, big change. Uh, we do not want to make a big, a very big change. And lastly, there is the article on how we can design a multilingual. Uh, natural in language interface done with the Ubiquity project. This is also very nice if you take a, take a look on it. So thank you all. This is what I think. Um, I, this is, I, I know this is sort of a debate or sort of a discussion could happen, but the whole goal is to attract newcomers and reduce the uh, uh, learning curve of these people. Thank you. Thank you. Je pourrais pas en penser aussi. Mais c'est pas très parfait. Uh, tested like in, like, tested like in the sense if if some if list is there and then processes yes it, it has been done. Ah, okay. The question is: Did you try the try doing the same list of commands that I mentioned on the? List directory. Yes, exactly. 
directory. Yes, exactly. You can do it. It is done. It is done. I, I've tried. I've tried. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, you could even try it very simply, like uh, write a bash script. Very simply, you could try it. It is done. It is very. It's possible. I'm working on a wiki project right now. I, I, it's not yet released, but I will soon release it. I will. I think also from multilingual, same thing. That will be very nice. Liste, la russus, liste in repertoire. Yes, yes. No, mais si vous voulez, vous pouvez me poser en français aussi. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, in C, Mm, in C, I, I still doubt. I right now I didn't find any. Okay, the question. Sorry, I'm sorry. The question he asked is, can he uh, he, he uses um, C and uh, C only C or Python as well? Okay, so he he uh, he uses C a lot, and he's asking whether the sub commands can be done in C language. Personally, I haven't found any any other option. That's why I moved to uh, Python, and I tested in Python. You can easily do it. Very, very simple. Very simple. Okay. Uh, I hope there are more. No more questions. Thank you very much.